I'm starting to use the internal renderer in Pro Tools a lot more, especially now that I can do however many custom re-renders I want to do in 2024.3. That's giving me a lot more flexibility now. But the problem is I'm still missing the Dolby Atmos Panner plugin, which that's something I use a lot. And it's not something I use in a lot of crazy ways, but I like having just sort of different auto pans going in a session to be able to put stuff in and just have it move around to add some movement to things. So today I want to show you, I don't know if I would call this a workaround, but it's kind of a band-aid in a way. So let me show you how you might be able to use the Atmos Panner, music panner plugin with the internal renderer. So the whole thing about this music panner plugin, for me anyways, is the sequencer. It just makes it real easy to kind of sequence panning moves. So if you want something to move in a predictable manner and you wanted to do that throughout the whole track that you're working on, it's real easy to kind of program stuff in here. And you know, if you're like me, you probably already have a whole bunch of different moves sort of programmed in. So what I have here today is I just have this little keyboard thing. Let me play a little bit. Kind of paddish sort of Blade Runner-y thing. And I want to get this and I'm just, I want it to kind of spin up top, but I want to use the Atmos Panner to do that. So I have the Atmos Panner plug in here and it's, it's set up to do the move that I wanted to do, which is just kind of a rotate thing. You can kind of see it I already set that up. I'm not going to, this isn't a how to use this plugin kind of thing. So I want to record that automation and I want that automation to control the Pro Tools Panner. So few things I need to do. First, I need to turn on automation for this plugin. The way I usually do that, I use the three finger salute, which is control, option, command. And I'm going to click on this box up here for automation. That just enabled everything. If I just wanted individual things, you can just click on individual parameters and it'll turn them on. But that's a great Pro Tools shortcut if you didn't know. Three finger salute. So, I've got automation turned on for everything. I need automation over here it needs to be set to right. Okay. Then I need to turn on plugin. All right. And then the last thing I'm going to need to do is on this track, I need to arm it. I'll just put it into touch. Now I'm just going to select a bar because I don't need, I don't need to record a ton of automation of this. I just need a little snippet. The way this sequencer works, if you don't understand it down here with the steps, so these are all our steps, this right here, this selection is how many beats is it going to take? So really selecting one bar is going to give me more than enough. It's probably going to give me two rotations, I think, if my math is correct, but we'll see in a minute. So automation's armed, right enables armed, automation is in right. I'm just going to play through this bar. And let's see what happens. So there we go. Wrote automation. So I touch light up. We can close this down. If I look down here at the automation lanes, let's see, pan X and Y looks like it has a bunch of stuff. So there we go. Some automation. So I need that on the Pro Tools panner. So I'm going to go up into edit, automation. Duplicate Dolby Atmos plugin automation to pan automation. I actually have Soundflow scripts that does all this stuff. So it's just a one button push, but I'll show you in the menus so that you can see where this stuff is. So duplicate that. We'll hit OK. And it just turned off that plugin for me, which is really helpful. And now if we look at the panner, we can see it's doing the move but we only have a bar of it. So if I open this up, we'll go to pan and I'll say all pan types. So now I can see I have that automation for that pan move. That's here's the, the left panner. Here's the right one. 
I need this automation across this entire clip though. So I'm gonna select one bar, right? And I'm gonna go up in here under edit, copy special, pan automation. Now I'm gonna just highlight this whole thing and I'm going to paste to fill selection. This is actually option command V. If I can find it, repeat to fill selection. There's all our panning information. Now, if I play through it, it's moving. If I unmute those keys, now they're gonna rotate. There we go. Now, the cool thing about this is if, let's say, you know, that maybe that's too fast of a move. So maybe I want to cut it in half. Well, if I set this track into ticks and make sure nothing else on your session is in ticks. Now, if I change the tempo of the session, I'll cut it in half. Just move that. It just stretched all that panning information. See here, we went from that. If I go back to 120, you can see it's faster. I want to stretch it. Cool little trick in Pro Tools. So you want to go even slower. Faster. So there you go. Sort of a Band-Aid, I guess, to use the Dolby Atmos Panner. I mean, ideally, they're going to make this work with the internal renderer at some point, I hope, or Avid maybe would create a sequencer panning plugin that will control the Pro Tools Panner natively, and you can just insert it on a track. That might be nice for even some of the guys who are still working in stereo just thinking. So anyways, hope that helps you out. If you've got other Atmos things, audio things you think I should talk about, please leave a comment and I'll talk to you soon.